All right, so I got a really big bench day, really big deadlift day, but if you see my hand all stiff like this, I just hurt it last night, and I don't know if it's a big sprain or if I broke it, but it hurts like shit. I can't even really, I can't even swing it. Like as soon as it's blood movement, it hurts. Uh, the first thing I did when I came into the gym is get under the bar, and I could bench the bar. So there is hope. So we might have to work around things. But I am a little bit sad because bench has been going so good, as you guys have seen on this channel. And today it was supposed to be a 295 at like 6'7". Um, and I honestly feel like right now with the strength that I have and the way things have been moving, I could probably hit 315 for three. But we've been keeping things like in the back and just letting it cook, you know? Kind of like something that's completely opposite than how I've trained before. I've always like at the edge of burning and frying myself. But now we're way behind and everything is going good. Unfortunately, I do have a little hiccup. So I'm gonna continue as if I don't have an injury and we'll see what happens. So with bench, uh, the two main things that I wanna do, at least for my body and the injuries that it's been through is warm up the rear delts and shoulders and then get a good stretch on the knee and the hips so I can get a good arch position. So one thing I've been like messing around with is doing my cardio and warm-ups first before I take my pre-workout, especially on days I have two primary sets. It's been feeling pretty good. Because what I noticed is if I take it as soon as I come in, yes, I'm 100% really fast, but then um, I feel like I don't have the 100% that I need during the second primary lift. So I've been enjoying doing my warm-ups first, and kind of like getting rid of the morning grogginess by myself before taking my pre and the creatine. And it feels like it's been uh, timing out way better. And it kind of feels closer to me, like on, during meat days, I'll take like a half scoop almost before every single lift. So it feels closer to competition day two. So if you guys have been feeling like Dude, some, some days, cause you know powerlifting, you can have a three, four hour workout and you like, dude, it feels like it's wearing off. Give that a try. Don't make it the first thing you take. Let your body wake up and warm up first on its own and then take it right before you're about to hit your, your first movement. Can't even really, can't even really open the shaker bottle by that hand. So, with your arm being hurt or your head being hurt, what's like the plan for today? Are you just gonna push the load, see where you can go? I'm gonna harder? see, so with my hand being hurt, I'm gonna see what I can do that doesn't hurt it. And obviously this literally just happened last night at like seven. And then after seven, I drove straight from Vegas to here. So I haven't had a chance to like go to urgent care, go to anywhere, it's just been just, and I went home and I got home at um, 11 at the train at five this morning because I got JKNU, so my schedule's just been packed. So I've just been dealing with it this whole time. Um, so the goal of today is to see what I can do and try to work around it and still try to get in as much volume as I can. The good thing is I'm on week two or three of the meat prep, so it's not towards the end yet. So um, I do need to see someone ASAP though to give me a diagnosis and Maybe there's a cast or something, but I want to get right back on track. But I'm treating it as if I'm not injured and just trying to do everything the right way. Bar feels good. That's a good sign. You just have to bench like A okay. Can't be too careful. Because with my hand, I'm literally benching with two fingers. There is a chance it could just straight fall out. So, you gotta be extra careful.
Moment of truth. Dude, not bad. It's kind of scary, because obviously it's just two fingers, but my bench form didn't change too much, and this still felt like, like one, whatever the fuck this is, 135, 130, whatever, it still felt like that. What I was scared of is putting 135 on and then going, oh fuck, it feels like 225. Going up. So, I don't know if it's broken or not, but it hurts like shit over here on this side. So I'm gonna try to wrap it a little bit higher for support. And it, it actually feels good. Like the minute I put it on the back of my hand, it almost feels like I'm wearing a belt. So hopefully this doesn't affect my bench at all, or it makes my bench better than I have to keep wrapping it like this. Next up we have one, I don't know, 85, 70, whatever, whatever that middle is. 164. I don't do these kilo things. Is 164? Huh? I didn't see you add the weight. Oh, what is this like? No, this is 154. 186. 184? 186? I don't know. What is, what is this? How much weight is that? Are you sure? <laughs> no one knows in here. No one knows what this is. It's too light. One, yeah, no one knows. Either. 187, that's what he said. Psst. Ah. Ah. Does hurt a little bit more, but I don't think I put it in the right place. But it moved good. So I'll ignore the pain and keep going. Oh. So this is, I know this one for sure. This is 220, right? 220, 225, same thing. <laughs> Bro, so far so good. Thank God. I might actually be able to hit the top set I need to hit today. Now I got two reds. This, I also know for sure. This is 264. I learned how to count by reds now. Because it goes 264, 374, 484, 594. So I'm starting to learn the language of the kilos. All right, if this goes good, then I will attempt my top set, which is like 290, 295. Um, I hope it goes good. I think it will, because even two plates was, was cool. That worked pretty good, right? Okay, let's do it. All right, this is the fucking bullshit part. So 295, okay? 295 divided by 2.2 makes it pounds. Minus 20, which is the bar, equals divided by two, which is each side. 57. 50. Five. So my coach never wants me to go over. So I have to find a one. Oh, and maybe I gotta chip it too. Cause I got a five. It's only three quarters. Where can I get three quarters from? Maybe here? Oh, 
Oh shit! Dude, I think I can hit it exactly. I need three quarters, right? So I got a half and a quarter. Math, baby. But always double check. So I got a quarter plus half plus one and a quarter plus five plus 50 equals times two equals plus 20 equals times 2.2 294.8 295 let's go can you give me a spot yeah so the scary thing right now is i think i broke my hand but i don't know yet because it happened last night so at any second i feel like the bar could fall out so just in case it does i already set the the head catcher thing, but if in case it does, just lift it up right Can we away. guide you on the way down? Like keep my hands there? Or no, no, no. Oh yeah, keep your hands there, but don't touch the bar. Right, right, right. Thank you, thank you. Uh, no lift off. Found a way to work around it so far. Okay. So. <laughs> How many runs are you doing? Just one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we did it! Oh, yeah! Thank you. Back offsets. Pressure is off now. Oh, we did it! Let's see what I got for back offs, actually. Three by four. What I hit last week. So I'm glad I hit the top set that I wanted. Uh, because of my hand, I'm gonna drop it just a little bit to be safe, so I don't push my luck. So I got three by four with a red and a blue, which I think is like 240 or something like that. 242? Trust me, if you don't know how to count kilos, it's like a world record. No one, no one can do this, I think. The stupidest injury I've ever had was one time I was like really tired, had some change plates, I think a quarter. And then I was talking to someone, I went like that, and it pushed the quarter and landed on my toes. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, it's happened, but I never got injured. That was the stupidest injury. I think it, that's the most common. That one, it hit my toe, and it bruised it like crazy. Immediately had tears, because it was so painful. I fell on the ground and I started laughing because of how stupid it was. Four. <laughs> Four reps. Oh, oh, it's good. So I'll say the pain is probably like a four or five out of ten. So it's not like it's pain free, but the fact that it's moving feels so good that it gives me motivation. And if you guys have been following this series and the other series, you know because of my left shoulder, I've been out of benching heavy for like almost eight months. So I ain't letting nothing stop me. And this is something you can't really work around, you know? You have to use your shoulder when you bench. This is fine. It's two more sets. By the way, if you're like, yo, what's that sick ass sweater he's wearing? We just dropped it, the foundations collection. We got in a black, gray, alpine green, and a maroon. And if you had a Rebirth 30 before, like that guys, this is completely updated. The graphic is bigger on the front and bigger on the back. Um, and in my opinion, looks way better. Cause I think that's like the old school size, you know? But these days everyone likes oversized everything and it matches the times. So I'm glad we're able to update it. Hopefully it's just a sprain. 
and then we got deadlifts. And with deadlifts, I'm like half scared, half not scared. What I'm scared of is if the bar vibrates and bounces, it's gonna hurt like shit, I already know it. But the other part is, with deadlifts, there's so many more tools. So like straps and all that. So that's the part that makes me not scared. And push comes to shove, I could always do like safety squat bar good mornings, which is still training the posterior chain. But bench, there's only really only one way to do it. So I'm glad I got this out of the way. All right, on to deadlifts. So even with the jacked up hand, bench was a success. We'll see how deadlifts go. I'm trying to get 450, 460. Holding the bar like this is not bad, but I'm gonna need straps soon. My two fingers is strong enough for reds, so, so far so good. So I found a really long strap, and I think it's gonna help out a lot, because it'll be harder to unravel. Because this one that I usually use, you can only get one revolution, and it'll come out easy if you're not gripping it hard, because it's a weightlifting strap, so it's made for you to let go. But I need something that's gonna stay on forever. When it bounces and it vibrates. Hey, it's moving though, it's moving. Oh, shit. That fucking vibration. But you know what's good? Because I can't just yank, it's really me, it's really forcing me to practice like the 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 acceleration cue where I just don't yank. You know, start, pull the slack out, pull the slack out of the bar, pull the slack out of your body and slowly accelerate. It's forcing me to lift the right way, which in a weird sense, it's kind of good. All right, so this is like 460 or 462 or 465 or whatever weird kilos it is. It's my top set. I stopped it for a single today. Ah! We did it. That's all that matters. What RPE does that look? Like a, I would say like a six or seven. Okay, good. Needed to be there. For sure, I think it would have been way faster and it's not for the pain. Cause I was pulling and I can feel my whole hand throbbing, 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 throbbing. And I'm like, come off the floor, please. Let's see. Oh, that was easy. It definitely hurt more than it felt. I mean, it hurt more than the RP that it felt. Okay, done with that. Uh, three by four. Okay. Got three sets of four. Definitely feels way heavier. 
trying to baby it, you know? But we gotta get that volume in. One more. Ah, oh, getting through it. Ah. Oh, done. Thank God. Oh. All right, so I got a dumbbell press. I don't know how this is gonna go. With the barbell, I could rest it here, right? Cause I'm, I'm like locking this in on this side. So my left side, I just have to balance. With dumbbell press, I have to completely control that dumbbell. So I don't even know if I could take it where it would lie. So I will wrap my hand and uh, we'll see. I'll wrap it the same way I did for a barbell bench. The cool thing is, if it doesn't work, I could drop it. It's not bad. awkward but we're getting the volume in I'll try to go up Ah. Ah. We're working through it. Working through it, man. It's definitely awkward because all the weight's here. And this one I could feel all the weight going right where it's supposed to be. But I'm still just trying to move it slow. Because even if I accelerate too fast, my hand will throb. It kind of feels like, I don't know if you guys ever had shin splints. But when it gets really bad, like someone flicks your shin and you're like, ah, it's like this throbbing feeling. That's what it feels like right now. So I can't really accelerate. So I'm just focusing on pauses, which is gonna be important during meet time anyways. So anything that I can do to bring the intensity up while keeping the load down is what I'm trying to do for this volume work. Ah! God damn. It hurts like shit when I have to rock it in motion because anything around this area hurts like crazy. So I have it here, but as soon as I rock it, the dumbbell comes and smashes all of that. I'm like, ah! And then until I put it back in place, I'm like, oh, thank God. So I actually have weighted pull-ups next. I don't think I can do them. So I'll just do just body weight, as many as I can do uh, with this hand. Ah. 
Yeah, I'm pausing at the top. Same philosophy. What can I do to bring up the intensity without bringing up load? So there's no way I could do pull up with like a plate because my hand will just give out. But at least I could maintain the same amount of weight and just flex my muscles harder and a little bit longer. Still relatively lean. That's the goal. I want to stay. So right now I'm 186 this morning. Three pounds off. After this meet, I'm gonna continue to recomp because at the 83 kilos, which is 183 pounds, I want to maximize the amount of muscle I have at that weight class. That's the goal. And I'm recomping, so I'm not in a deficit where we saw last year. Like one of the biggest mistakes I made was I didn't really worry about my weight until my powerlifting meet. Last three weeks, I did a drastic cut and I hit, I think like 490 on squat and training. I only hit like 460 at the meet because I just had too much of an energy dump. So I'm learning from that where I'm maintaining my weight the whole way through and I'm recomping so that I'm not losing calories. I'm just changing my macronutrient content. So I'm lowering the fat, increasing the carbs, and which my body is better at utilizing. And I've been able to stay, I think I'm probably at 15% body fat right now. I still have a little bit of obliques. I still have like my leg definition. Last exercise, hamstrings. Done. Fucking got through it, dude. I was very doubtful this morning with this hand, but I think we got what we needed to do to progress. And we still got, I think, three or four weeks till the meet. So everything could line up pretty good. I still have a really good qualifying meet. What up guys, thank you for watching episode eight of Road to Worlds. I only have three more weeks left until my first meet. And this is very important because this is gonna help me qualify for nationals. And we're using this as our training block and data to figure out what we're gonna do for the meet in May. So everything's been going insanely good. I think I'm gonna put together a pretty good total at 83 kilos. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next episode, episode nine. And if you guys are wondering what kind of fresh ass gear I have, this is the 10 year anniversary tee. 
And we also have the Alpine Green Rebirth hoodie. The entire Rebirth hoodie line has been updated with the bigger graphics, as I mentioned. The Foundations collections just recently dropped. See you in the next video. Peace!